Rocket League in 2024 is not the same as it used to be in 2015. Disastrous. Now, Rocket League is harder. So the question is, what makes a mechanical player in 2024? What are the 20% of things these mechanical gods are doing that are giving them 80% of the results? That is the question, and after a week of research, preparation, and editing to bring you this video, today, I have the answer. These are the five skills, five things every mechanical player is doing that you might not realize. But first, I know what you're thinking, why should you listen to me? The answer is, this game hasn't come easy to me. Now that I'm 22 years old, and not getting any younger, unfortunately, I've had to learn how to keep up in Grand Champ 3 lobbies without being some cracked high school kid. I, probably like you, just don't have as much time to play this game as I used to, because my full-time job is running my coaching company, thegrandchampbootcamp.com, and it's what led me to discovering these five skills I'm using to keep up and that I use to get Grand Champ 3 two months ago while playing the game for an hour a day. The good news is by the end of this video, my promise to you is you'll have five concrete steps you can follow to get mechanical no matter what rank, age, or skill level you're starting at. Let's begin. Skill number one, first touches. Mechanical players make it look easy because they make perfect first touches. When you get a good first touch, you are unstoppable. You can flip reset and go low, continue air dribble, bump, the options are endless. But the problem is most of us do training where the first touch is already handled for us, or the ball is set up perfect every time in the same spot. So we never have to worry about taking possession or gaining control. Then we get ranked and we wonder why things are so hard and we have no space to set things up. So if you've ever felt like, I just have no space in your platinum or diamond or champ lobbies. Maybe that's true, but more likely the problem is you're not making fast and controlled first touches the right way. For starters, when I'm coaching people in the diamond and champ ranks and I try to get pointers on this, I find myself reminding students to make their first touch away from the opponent. Contrary to popular belief, you don't just want to take the ball straight at the net when you get it. Instead, you want to make your first touch away because that creates time for you to set up the play. Take this example from my last educational smurfing in champ video. Don't worry, Psionics, this is a private game. Now in the example, I see two defenders back. So what most players would do is they would get this ball coming at them and they'd hit it right back into the corner. But instead, because I see an opponent already positioned in the corner, I make my first touch towards midfield. By making the touch towards midfield, I have more time before the defender can apply pressure and it allows me time to set up a cut and eventually score. That's tip number one. That's the game sense solution for making better first touches. But if you feel like you know what to do and you just don't have the time to do it in games, the best catch-all solution for this is first touch training in free play. Specifically, I recommend my hot potato drill. I broke this down more in my top five free play drills a year or two ago, but basically go into free play, spawn the ball in front of your car using the down command on your controller, and then your goal is to hit the ball in a circle without letting it bounce more than once. Get it? It's hot potato, so it's not supposed to. Yeah, okay. What this will do is it will improve your timing and your speed to take control of the ball because you'll get better first touches. If you're having trouble learning this timing on the up bounce, or this is just your first time doing a drill like this, go into free play and enable slow motion. Reduce the game speed down to something like 50%. Now the same rules apply. We're just waiting for the ball to bounce before we make contact. That way we don't kill it. Instead, we lift the ball up. As you improve, you can go faster by adding in power slide taps or power slide cuts, and you can finish with a bounce dribble shot or a hook shot using a speed flip or a barrel roll if you don't know speed flips yet. Practice this for five minutes during your warm up every day for a week or two until you get consistent, and I promise your first touches will 10x in consistency in your ranked games. Skill number two drill the setup. Most players obsess about the ending of a mechanic. If it's a dribble, you're practicing the flick. If it's an air dribble, you're working on the carry. If it's a ceiling shot, you're practicing the shot. The issue is, for most of you watching, especially at the intermediate ranks, the success of your mechanics is not going to be dependent on the finish, it depends on your setup. Instead of practicing the ceiling shot, practice hitting the ball up so that way it almost hits the ceiling and then learn the rest of the mechanic. 
instead of practicing your flicks, practice the catch that sets up the dribble in the first place. Instead of practicing the carry on the ground air dribble, practice the first touch and the setup. Practice the pop that you're getting into the air. For example, let's look at high rank players dribble. The weird truth is that these high level players aren't actually dribbling faster than people like you and me. They just set up their dribbles faster than people like you and me. Think about it. They're not actually doing more than us. They're doing less. The difference is when a pro sets up these mechanics, there's no wasted movement. Next time you go into training, spend your first five minutes just practicing the first touch and then cancel the shot. If you're practicing dribbles, just practice catching the ball. Reset, catch, dribble. Reset, catch, dribble. And you don't even need to score it. Then once you do your couple minutes of practicing the setup, the rest of the warmup, do the entire pack start to finish. The point I'm trying to make is the more guaranteed your setup, the more guaranteed you're actually going to be able to do these mechanics in ranked. Skill number three, dodge control. When you don't have dodge control and you limit your options on the ball, and what happens is you're then giving your opponents opportunities to outplay you. It's twofold. It's to keep control for yourself so you can make threatening plays, but even more so is to keep the ball out of the opponent's hands and making sure that they're the ones having to play defense and stop you from outplaying them. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can cancel a flip in any direction in Rocket League. So there are almost infinite ways you can combine these things, but pros now are using this everywhere. One new example of this is something that's been coined the Mina flip. Basically, you'll see a pro jump and air roll towards the wall, and then they'll speed flip away from it to cancel their flip and land on the wall faster. It's the fastest way to sort of climb up the wall. Or sometimes a pro will set up an air dribble off their own back wall, and then they'll speed flip into it, but they'll cancel that flip midway partially to position their nose up at the end. Waiten has dubbed this a twist flip a few years back, and it's really useful in the air. You'll see a lot of pros do this on back wall setups. But if that seems intimidating, don't worry. I'm going to bring it back down for people like you and me. For starters, what we can do is learn how to flip cancel after hitting the ball. And basically, all we're going to do is we're going to go for the normal shot. You don't really have to score it. You can just miss the shot intentionally. But the goal is, after you make contact with the ball, we want to land on the nearest surface by flip canceling through the shot. So after we front flip, we're going to pull down, for example, or after we speed flip, we're going to pull down and hold to cancel our flip and successfully land or recover on a nearby surface. Another way you can practice this is with a pack that I mentioned in my recent Get Mechanical video. It's from Kevpert and it's literally called Dodge Control. It's got all sorts of shots where you can use speed flips and cancels to stay close to the ball and recover on a nearby walls. And finally, for more advanced players, I'll even give you this custom pack that my pro coach Shock has given me on my climb to SSL. Bear in mind, this pack is only five shots, but it's specifically designed for quick air roll recoveries onto the wall. Have you ever wondered if you're working on the right stuff for your rank and for your weaknesses? If so, you might benefit from one-on-one -on -one coaching. Earlier this year, I launched the Grand Champ Bootcamp Unlimited, which is a 12-week one-on-one coaching experience by Rocket League players for Rocket League players ranked platinum and above, 18 plus only. As of the time I'm recording this, Shock has just 12 of 30 spots left open for one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you wanna see if you qualify for one-on-one -on -one coaching with me and my team, DM my team Discord account keyword now to get started. First link in the description below, that's keyword now to see if you qualify for one-on-one -on -one coaching. The fourth thing mechanical players are doing these days is avoiding ranked 3v3. The reason like ranked 3v3 isn't taken very seriously, especially by professional players, for lack of better terms, it's who ball chases harder. That's not cultivating any sort of good habit for uh, professional threes or good habit for general Rocket League theory in general or Rocket League meta. It's actually quite stressful to be chased all game by ranked 3s players who are bumping you and chasing you and chasing the ball and it's not really helpful for them in any sense which is why pros don't take it seriously at all spoiler nowadays the best pros don't give up about the rank threes ladder instead ranked 2v2 is actually where the best players in the world play and the top players on the rank twos leaderboard are informally considered you know the top ranking pros you have more space to execute on the ball and practice your mechanics in twos uh in threes you're doing a lot more team play and like leaving the ball and forcing you're doing more bumping and boost control but in twos it's a lot more i'm executing on the ball i'm practicing my mechanics 
and I'm outplaying a defense more. The fifth thing all the fastest improving players are doing right now is mastering their car control. The reason this is so important is because in the last five years, players have discovered so many new moves in Rocket League that if you don't spend time to learn these moves in free play or in training, you're going to be left behind. I'm not just talking about wave dashes and half flips and speed flips. I'm talking about more complicated mechanics like arrow left or arrow right and recovery things like empty jumps, zap dashes, wall dashes, flip cancels like we were focusing on earlier. These are all new things that you didn't need to be a pro or need to be a grand champ or SSL five years ago, but now they're standard at the top levels. And bear in mind, this is a new thing, but I think it's important for you guys watching because if you're somebody who just doesn't ever want to go in free play, like you, for example, if you don't know how to speed flip and you're not willing to go watch a speed flip tutorial and learn speed flips, I don't know how else to say this, but like you're kind of going to be left behind because speed flips are like the tip of the iceberg. Now people are learning them and doing them even in diamond, which is why to bring it back to you, if I was restarting my Rocket League journey and I was trying to think about where to start after watching a video like this, I would go back and I would master my car control first. I'd probably be playing free play before I even start grinding ranked. So if I could give you like a three-step order, right? Number one, I would spam free play, right? I would learn all the different moves, half flips, wave dashes, speed flaps, and, and, and all, all the new mechanics that I sort of have to get down in muscle memory or discover. Then I would go into workshop maps to further improve my dribbling, to further improve my air roll control in rings. And then only after that, after I'm getting to like diamond or champ or even closer to grand champ at this point, then I would start to spam more training packs and specific mechanics and 1v1 and rank twos and stuff like that. But if I did it in that order, instead of what I actually did, which was like grinding ranked threes for my first 800 hours, I feel like I would be so much more of a mechanical player today. And I could probably have gotten to where I am in literally a third of the time. I genuinely believe that. Anyway, now that you have these ideas, you're probably wondering, Luke, okay, I'm ready to go train. What mechanics should I learn first? If that's you, you're in luck. I just dropped my new 2024 mechanics tier list. Click here for my updated tier list on the best mechanics to learn at your rank in 24. In 2024. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys.